when you think of and hear that number, 50, 50 years with this agency, how does that strike you? It's hard to believe. You know, for, first off, I took my kids on vacation last week, my grandkids. One of them gave me his cough. <laughs> so if I sound hoarse, it's because I am. But I'm too stubborn to stay home. It's hard to understand 50 years. You know, I wake up every day and do what I love. This organization is my passion and my life and my heart and my soul. And I wanted to be the sheriff and work in law enforcement, but from the time I was four or five years old, and to think that I have been able to do this for 50 years, to work here is pretty special to me. That number, though, it's like an anniversary, right? You think 50 years with a spouse, now 50 years with one agency rising to the top of it. Absolutely. It's a big number. It is a big number, but it's not going to be as big as the next one. I'm going to be here when I'm 60. We'll be talking again at 60. And as long as I'm healthy and can move the organization forward and keep the people safe, I love to work. This, this is my hobby. This is what I do every day, all day long. It's not just a job. It's not just a career. It's a way of life. And I love it every day. I wake up most mornings before the alarm goes off, excited and eager to come to work. And today was no exception. When did you know that you wanted to be at least law enforcement? And did you always want to have this job? I did. From the time I was four or five, I believe it's God's mission for me to be in law enforcement and to serve the community, to protect them, to keep them safe. And I've been able to do it my entire adult life. I don't remember a time in my life, from literally from the time I was a, a small, small child, that I didn't want to be in law enforcement. My mother had me a little policeman's outfit when I was about four years old that I used to march around in. So this is not what I do, it's who I am every day. <clears throat> Can you talk a little bit about your rise through the ranks first in 72? You become a dispatcher a couple of years later, you're out on patrol, and then obviously 2004, and since then, head of the organization. I, I rose through the ranks rapidly. At 18, I was hired as a dispatcher. The sheriff, Monroe Brandon, allowed me go to, to go to the police academy and to be sworn in as a deputy at 19. I was the first deputy under the age of 21 to be sworn in when the law changed. At 22, I was a corporal. At 23, I was a sergeant. At 25, I was a lieutenant. At 27, I was a captain in charge of criminal investigations. Uh, I mean, I'm a child prodigy of this industry. And I've been blessed to work for five different sheriffs. I, I've married my high school sweetheart. You know, we celebrate 50 years of marriage this year. We were engaged in high school. And my life's a dream. It's, it's been perfect. And I give the credit to God and to my wife and to the men and women of the sheriff's office who make me look really, really good every day. They work very hard. They're all professionals, and they do a great job. And together, we're able to serve and have crime at a 50-year low in this county, which is pretty remarkable. You have served on various commissions, including Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and led sheriff's associations. What's been most rewarding about doing that sort of work outside of your sure. own agency? Uh, Without a doubt, the most meaningful thing that I've ever been allowed to do outside of being sheriff is to serve on the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission where we investigated that horrible massacre that never should have happened. And the results are that we have children across this state safer today than they've ever been. School is a safe place to be. It's even more safe now and we're gonna do our best to reduce the probabilities of an active shooter even more. I've, it's been an honor to be elected by my peers to be the president of the Florida Sheriff's Association, and then to be elected by my peers 
to be the president of the major county sheriffs of America for all over this country, the agency's largest sheriff's offices elected me and allowed me to be their president. That was meaningful. But what I love most of all is serving the people of Polk County. It's not just writing tickets and locking bad guys up. We have a big charity here that people donate to. We go into the community and help those less fortunate. We literally give out millions of dollars worth of help free to those that are less fortunate. We have big companies that donate their overages and donate their dented products to us that help us. So we're what I call a wraparound full service law enforcement agency. If we go to your house at three o'clock in the morning and you don't have diapers, food, milk for the baby, we have credit cards with all of our lieutenants on our charity. And we'll go to the store and buy things that you need to take care of your family in the middle of the night until we can get you long-term help. That's special to me. That's what gives me the energy to come to work every day, knowing that we're gonna help somebody today who needs help. You've had an opportunity to reflect knowing that this is your 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. What would you consider to be your biggest accomplishment in 50 years with this sheriff's office? I don't know that there's any one single accomplishment. One of the accomplishments that I'm very proud of actually started long before I was sheriff. I convinced one of our previous sheriffs to pay for college education. You see, I was able to go to college on a federal program called Law Enforcement Education Assistance. And this was way back in the day. And of course, then that federal program died out. And we law enforcement officers couldn't afford to go to college. There weren't the opportunities. So I convinced that sheriff to pay for college education. Well, by the time I got to be sheriff, based on that humble beginning, I was able to require sergeants and lieutenants to have at least a bachelor's degree, captains, majors, and chiefs, and their civilian equivalents to have a master's degree. I provide for my folks the very best police and administrative training in this nation. And that's why we're different here. That's why we're simply the very best in this business. Because it's a holistic approach to keeping people safe, to delivering services, to doing more and more. Our current goal is to, is to do more and more for those that are mentally ill and drug addicted. But it makes a difference when you show up every day with a passion to help those that are less fortunate. And that's what we do here. So there's no single event that I can point to, but I can show you a philosophy of helping people and a philosophy of creating a good, solid, safe community where wrong is wrong and right is right and wrong is never right. And that's what we do in this county. Those programs are paid for by the Sheriff's Office to help those people attain those levels that you insist that they have. Absolutely. And amazing. We can we'll take we'll take a kid here right out of high school with a high school education and we will provide the opportunity for he or she to get a master's degree and to be promoted through the ranks and to go from an entry level salary, you can rise through the ranks to a six figure salary. That's pretty remarkable. And it's all possible with hard work and dedication. We provide the support and the infrastructure. Then it's up to the young men and women to take advantage of that. And they do here. We have a very intelligent workforce, a very educated workforce. We, we, we hire people that have a passion to serve and help others that are less fortunate. That's why we're successful. What stands out to you in your memory as your toughest day? Oh my goodness, there's been several toughest days. 
the first time I was, I was confronted with death of a friend that was a law enforcement officer at T.A. Burnham. We went to high school together. We went to Polk Community College together. We worked together. His wife and my wife, we were all friends. And he was shot and killed in the line of duty by a madman who was still sitting on death row. I mean, this happened in, you know, like 1980, and he is still on death row. That was the toughest day of my life because that was the person closest to me that was killed in the line of duty at that time. Since then, if you look on the wall of those that have died in the line of duty, I think I was either a friend of or a supervisor of or both to almost everyone on the wall. That is a very difficult day because these are good young men and women who come here every day to give a, the best of themselves. And sometimes they give their life so that we can have a free society. So any one of those days was a work day. The rest of the days, this has been a wonderful job, but those days are work days, and they're horrible work days, and they occur occasionally, despite our best efforts to the contrary. About those famous Grady Judd news conferences, mm -hmm. are you in your element during those? Oh, yes, I am. I love to communicate with the people that I work for. I love to just be me. People ask, well, what's he like when the cameras are off? the same way as when the cameras are on. I am who I am every day. I like to cut up and have fun. I like to be serious when I need to be serious. But I like to say what I think the vast majority of the people in the community are thinking anyway. So when I do a press conference or I meet with the media, I want to communicate as if I'm sitting in their living room on the couch with them having a conversation, and I enjoy it a lot. I speak the truth, I just tell you what it is. You know, sometimes you may not like what I say, but it's the truth. It's what we understand to be the truth. It's the best information we have. And one of the greatest compliments I had was when a guy came up to me and said, Sheriff, I don't always agree with everything you say, but I like the fact that you'll hit issues head on and tell us what's happening. And I said, well, let me let you in on a little secret. I don't like all the decisions I make and all the things I say because I am providing services and doing things that's in the best interest of 750,000 people in this county. You seem to have a uh, soft spot in your heart when it comes to children, and that goes everything from busting predators to going fishing. Oh, yeah, I love children so very much. You know, we all were a child at one time. And if you think back, and if you focus, you understand you don't have any choice of what parents you're born to, where you live, what you wear, what you eat, how you're taken care of. It all depends on parents. I was blessed, I was raised with a, a wonderful, loving pair of parents who taught me right from wrong, who taught me how to be patriotic, who taught me how to be a Christian and how to be a God-serving and a God-fearing person. All children don't have that opportunity. But children should be innocent. They should be able to grow up in, in, a, in a fantasy world as young children where everything's ideal, where they don't have to worry about what they're going to eat or if they're going to eat, where they don't have to worry about saying the wrong thing and being physically abused. That's what I see. Your popularity begs the question, do you have other political aspirations? Well, my next political aspiration is to be elected sheriff next time again. I've had the opportunity to run for Congress. I've been recruited to run for 
the Senate and the House, both at the state and federal level. That's not who I am or what I want to do. I want to serve the people as their sheriff. I want to, I want to be next to the people. When, when you're sitting in Washington, D.C. and making decisions, or they should be making decisions up there, that would frustrate me very badly. Plus, I'm not with the people. All I really want to be is the sheriff. There is no greater honor to me than being the sheriff of the county. I don't want to be the governor. I don't want to be in the Senate. I don't want to be in the House. I want to be people's sheriff so that they know when they need help, if everybody else has turned them away, I can always call the sheriff. He'll figure out how to help me, and I always will. How long do you see yourself being sheriff? Well, as long as the people will elect me. I love this organization so much that if the day comes where I can't move the organization forward, where I'm not physically emotionally and mentally able to move the agency forward, I will step aside because I love it that much. But I pride myself in us being a learning organization. We improve, not quarterly, not semi-annually, not annually, but we change systems and processes every day. We stay on the cutting edge every day. So as long as, as, long as I can serve the people of Polk County, as long as I can move the organization forward, as long as I can create an environment for my young men and women who we hire here to thrive. I want to be sheriff. I can do the math. 18 when you started, 50 years makes you 68. Sure. Do you see being able to take that passion for another, I won't say 50 years, but hopefully God gives them to you. But how long do you think you might be able to go on just from that standpoint? Yeah. Well, I take it election by election. I mean, think about this. We've had presidents in, the seven, in their 70s run an entire country. I think I should be able to run the county at least 105. I don't know. I'm just saying. So as long as I'm healthy and we move the agency forward, we keep people safe, I want to do this. What drives me, uh, I have a passion for service, for public service. I have a passion to stay in the center of God's will, and I believe this is God's will for my life. You know, I'm, I'm a, a true believer in the, in the Word and the Spirit, and the Bible tells you nobody is in a position of public trust except that God allows them to be there. So I believe that God has allowed me to do this. And one day, when everything's said and done, I'm going to have to stand before God and account for my life. 